everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope your week was blessed. Mine was fantastic. Okay, last week I did mention I'll be coming in with a friend. Voila! Meet my friend Grace. Grace, say hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so it promises to be fun today. So just chill, relax, and let's have some fun. <laughs> okay, so we were discussing about what you need to know before putting the makeup on the client like this. Honey, you look good. First of all, I mean, girl, please, you look fantastic. Oh, you can say that. You're my client, right? You'll, you'll pay me? If you do a good job. Okay, okay. Alright, let's get right into it. Okay, so, assuming I'm meeting you for the first time, um, I want to come, I want to meet your client presented, we want to meet her organized. So the first thing I'll tell you is take out time for yourself after meeting your clients. It's okay to take out time for yourself. It's okay to take out time to organize your tools. You put it, um, you can organize them in sequence as you will use them just like the primer, the, the, cor um, the corrector, your foundation, your concealer, your setting powder, your blush, your lipstick, everything you will use in sequence, line them up, it helps with your organization and visualization. And once you're done with each section of the makeup, you put them aside so that everything is not scattered. So you're not looking for one brush or one brush. It gives the client that, oh, okay, this lady knows what she's doing. Okay. The second thing I will say is know your client's skin tone. Okay. First and foremost, before knowing your client's skin tone, ask for your client's permission if it's okay to feel her face. For instance, can I touch her face? It's okay because some people have, I have a high cheekbone, but I can see you also have uh, high cheekbones like me. So sometimes it's okay to feel your client's face, know her brow bones, her structure and everything. It helps with your visualization. Now, after that, you want to know her skin tone. Because skin tone helps you choose the right foundation to suit her. It helps you choose the eyeshadow. It helps you, make, it helps you tailor the look for her. You know what I mean? So you look for a skin tone. How I look for a skin tone, sometimes you can check the eyes, or better say, I do prefer checking her wrist. She has the green, her veins are green, meaning she's the warm color. My veins too, <laughs> they are green, meaning I'm a warm color person. So in checking a skin tone, we have three different types. We have the warm color, the cool color, and the neutral. The warm color are people who are leaning towards peachish, yellowish, Greenish, goldish. <laughs> the cool colors are, uh, are colors who are pinkish, silverish, blueish, purpleish. You know all the ish ish. <laughs> and then the neutral is when when you have a warm, when you light in between the warm color and the cool color, then you you have a neutral. Sometimes you can have a bluish, greenish, blue greenish veins. That means you're neutral. You're both warm and cool at the same time. So the next thing I would like to talk about that is very, very highly important is not the shape, the face shape of your client. That helps you in, in contouring, in highlighting, nowhere to accentuate. It helps give her a perfect look. For example, over her face, you see the vertical line is wider than the um, cheekbone lines or the horizontal line. That shows that um, over. Let's look at her face. If I want to determine her face, the vertical line, let's see, and the horizontal line are pretty much the same. They are similar. So I'll say she's, she's round. You're round. No, check again. <laughs> no, I think you're pretty much round. Yeah, yeah. you're round. Yeah. You didn't okay. see the ball. No, you don't. <laughs> All right. You do not have a long cheekbone. Those with long cheekbones have either heart or a diamond. So, honey, I understand. I like you don't. the diamond. <laughs> no, Sounds okay. nice. <laughs> okay, so we have the overall, we have the round, we have the square face where their forehead, the line on their forehead is bigger, longer than the, oh no, it's the same size, pardon me, with the chin, with the jawline. So, we just put the line, boom, like the line here. It's the same with the jawline, so just put the line gives you a square face. But the, the one that gets confusing is the heart and the diamond face. For the heart face, the forehead line is longer 
than the um, jawline. The jaw lines are usually dropping for those with the shape of a heart. But for those with the shape of a diamond, it's, it's like the reverse. The forehead line is not as big as the heart line. The forehead line is small, but they, they still have a jaw. They still have a jaw line. They have a, their forehead, the line of their forehead is not as long as those with hearts. So yeah, it's important to know the face shape of your clients. La um, another thing I will say is know the eye. Your, the eye structure of your clients. I know it looks a lot to, to take all in before you do your makeup on the client, but it really doesn't take that much time. That's why you need to study your client's face, um, look at her face, you know, and touch where you need to touch, feel the structure and visualize. Once you have that vision, after looking at her skin tone, looking at the color of her eyes, or looking at the color of um, what, what she's wearing, you, you, if you've noticed, you're, you're, you're already building up to what you want. So just focus on your client. That's the most important thing. And knowing the eye shape is, it, this part can be a bit tricky, you know, because sometimes we have a, a popular or familiar pattern. We just want to contour the crease and then go in with the lighter color at the inner crease, at the inner, yeah. <laughs> We want to contour the crease and go in, go in here, but sometimes it doesn't always work like that. For example, now if you have, um, yeah, we have the deep set eyes, the white set eyes, the the small eyes, the dropping eyes. We have the 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 what other eyes do we have? We have the hooded eyes. Yeah. So I, I, you are more like a, close your eyes, please. Eyes are sunk inside, so I'll say your deep set. You have a deep set eyes. All right. For me, the goal for me, if she was my client, the goal for me would be. I'm the client. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, the goal would be to bring out her eyes because they are sunk inside, and to do that, lighter colors help do that. So I'll use lighter colors on the crease to bring out a sunk eye to bring it out. So I use the. The lighter colors on the um, the lighter shade on the crease. If you have a if you have a deep set eyes, um, if you, okay that's if, if you have a white set eyes, it means that the eyes the, the, is wider than the space in between. It's wider than normal eyes. And what you do is normally the normal eyes, the space in between normal eyes is is the is is, is as long as is the width of an eye, the space here. So if you're white, it means your eyes. Are wider from the uh, to the bridge or the middle of the nose. It means you have a right set eyes, and so the goal for such people is to put dark colors at inner this side, put dark colors to pull it in. But for close set eyes, it means it's close to the bridge of the nose. We need it to pull out. We use white bright colors to pull them out so that they look they appear normal instead of no not normal but you know what I mean. Yeah. They appear to be close um to be not let's use the word normal permit me to use the word normal <laughs> they, 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 they don't look so, just using bright colors to pull out the eyes so that it doesn't look too too um close if you put dark colors in already close the eye you're bringing the eyes closer to the bridge of the room but once you use a lighter color it brings it out so that's the goal of 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 a deep um close set eyes those together we um yeah, that's, that's the basic point, knowing your, the eye shape of your, of your client is very important. Now, it's also good that sometimes we look at uh, makeup, we look at pictures of makeup and then we're like, oh, this makeup is so fantastic. You know what I mean? You, you look at it and like, who else made the makeup? Then when you not eventually see the process, you're like, um, hello, I can do this. Why, why, does, why does it happen to you? Why, why? I feel like it's like this is because everything of the client is taken into consideration. The, the skin tone of the client, the eye shape of the client, the structure of the client, everything or everything that concerns the client was taken into consideration to give the client a tailored look. So that's why it looks like when you see the finished product, you're like, oh well, this is fantastic because everything was down to what she was wearing or what she is wearing was consider to give her that perfect look. So in the process of your 
makeup as well. It's okay when you're doing makeup, not just. I always like to do makeup with one hand and put uh, one the other hand behind me. It just shows organization, I think, and respecting the client's boundaries too. You know what I mean? So sometimes, yeah, when you do you're, you're doing your makeup and stuff, it's okay or it's good to step back a bit to see what you're doing. Because in most, whatever you're doing must be in vision with what you're seeing. You know what I mean? Like what you see in your head must be what is coming out. It must be the process, as it must be what you're doing. You understand? So we, sometimes you have to take a step back to see and make sure that everything is aligned. Then you continue your makeup. Another thing to keep clients coming into your uh, come to your chair is to engage in light conversation but not distracting. Not a, a, a slight conversation, just to make the client warm up to you, to look comfortable, to to assure herself that oh, okay, I, I can't be comfortable with this person. So you engage in tiny conversations enough to still keep your concentration going. To still keep your concentration going on the client, so you're engaging the client. The client is getting warming up, warming up to you. She's forming, she's being relaxed before you know it. She's cool. She's coming over. You know that kind of thing. You're, that means you're building a relationship between you and your client, and that's very important because at the end of the day, it's all about the clients. They are paying for your time, so you have to be focused. Doing makeup on the clients all the time to start thinking, oh, I just want to see my boyfriend. <laughs> or what am I before we get me to that? No, it's the time to concentrate. Leave all the boyfriend issues, mm. all the married man issues, all the issues you might be having. Keep them outside and focus on the two hours you have with your cousin and give her yeah. <laughs> oh, when you are pain. Focus no. on her and get the result. And so when when you're done with doing that, it's also finally I will say that to keep your clients steady, coming to you, and compliment, uh, compliment your client. This is the mistake most artists do, and I don't know why. I find we do have the skills and we, we use the skills on people, but we also do fail to compliment the, the face that is carrying the makeup. You know what I mean? Imagine I'm done with your makeup and I'm like, oh, you look so good. No, 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 imagine, you, oh, you look so good, I did a good job. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm so good in this. It's, it's to make the client, uh, hello, it's on my face. Mm. So it's very important. Clients look at us, all these things affect their thinking, makes them realize that, it, uh, that oh, okay, this client, this, this, this makeup artist is all about herself, or this makeup artist is, is appreciating it. So when you're done with the client, you're like, oh wow, you look fantastic. This makeup suits you as a you're like, can I take a quick picture? You look amazing. The client will start thinking, oh, this 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 is this is I'm comfortable at home. Before you know it, this is your first time doing the client. Before you know it, she's introducing you to people, oh, this is my makeup artist, my makeup artist, she did this, she did that. Before you know she's introducing you to your family, your friends, your sisters, our generation, and pretty much everybody she knows. Is coming to your chest to make up simply because you put her first, you, put, you appreciated her, and you complimented her rightly. Sometimes it's okay, there are some clients that have all these sweet eyelashes. You know, those eyelashes that that very um, that folded inside. Oh, god, I do not like those eyelashes. So, what I do because sometimes I fix lashes for clients, so what I do is Use a wand to bring it out and try to fix the lashes with the other one. So it's okay to tell the client, wow, your lashes gave me a time, but I'm glad you came out successful. That way the client will be angry, but she'll be like, you know what, you're the first person complimenting my lashes. And I know it is bad, but I do, she'll be looking at me, I do like the outcome. So at the end of it all, your client is comfortable with you. Because if she's not comfortable with you, it's just like, that's how you wonder, okay, you see two makeup artists, you're more skillful 
than the other. But you're wondering, how can, why can't you get this client to come to your table? It's because of the relationship the client has with the other makeup artist. She's comfortable, they've built a bond together. She's comfortable with the other makeup artist. You know, she's young. maybe you're the type, okay, we know you do have skills, but then you're always frowning your face. You know, you know when you're frowning your face and doing a makeup on time, she's like, she's, she's like, what's this? And they kind of be wondering, are you sure this is my makeup? She's doing on my face. It's like, if you, how would you feel? Very bad. <laughs> like, I'm squeezing my face and I'm doing your makeup. And it's like, you're making me look. Squeeze face. Exactly. <laughs> like it, it just has this psychological thinking of the client that you're not sure of what you're doing. Mm. But if you're smiling <laughs> and you're building a uh, rapport with your client, even if you do not have that much of skills, <laughs> trust me, the client will keep coming back to you because she is comfortable and the bond you people have built is strong. So that's a few check on the tree or tips on having the tailored new for your yes. so guys i hope you did enjoy this video if you did like it give it a thumbs up please comment below if it was enlightening to you share the video subscribe and next week will be my first video on business psychology so we are going to be discussing what it means to be a business psychologist so all you workers out there who are interested in growing your organization in achieving your organizational goals voila we have our section tomorrow. No, we have a section next week. It promises to be enlightening and to answer a few of the questions as well. So stay tuned, enjoy, relax. Don't forget to press that thumbs up, share, and then subscribe to my channel till I come your way again next week. Bye.